Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The budget bill passes the House and now moves on to the Senate. Also tonight, a local male is behind bars for stalking his ex-girlfriend. And should the police chief be chosen by the people? In sports, NMI steps up to the medal stand at the Tokyo Olympics. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Good morning, Kiko. I am here at Docomo Walleri Branch. The Docomo staff here are super helpful with my appointment. They take good care of me in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for helping me out downloading and using the Skid Lionel app. I can take care of all my Docomo needs. No need to wait in line with the Skid Lionel app. We love you, Docomo Pacific. Better together. So up until now, the only ways we've had to fight COVID are closing things down, which has been really hard on people here in the CNMI. Um, a lot of people have lost jobs, um, a lot of people have lost incomes. Uh, and although it's been effective, it's not sustainable. It's not something we can do forever. Um, vaccination is a way for us to safely resume a lot of those things that bring vibrancy to the CNMI, to hopefully reopen to tourism in some safe capacity to get people back to work in various service industries. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I am the I in CNMI. We are a team and you cannot spell team without me. M-E. Get a shot and opportunity to set the CNMI free from COVID-19. Go for a save, a strikeout, a knockout punch. That's our go. V for victory. V for vaccinate. Let's make this a team win and we can all celebrate. Half a day, Tirawami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, August 4, 2021. The House of Representatives passed their version of the overall budget for fiscal year 2022. One significant trait about this budget is that it has a demand for transparency. Members of the House made a unanimous decision on Tuesday to pass the budget bill appropriating $103.3 million for the next fiscal year. Authored by Ways and Means Chairman Donald Maglonia, the bill identifies $144.8 million in local revenue, but will only avail $103.3 for appropriation. And with the governor's spending plan for the American Rescue Plan Act funds of $175 million, the overall budget for FY 2022 amounts to $278.3 million. Melonia says they've added several provisions in the bill, one that would solidify the governor's spending plan for the ARPA funds. What we're basically saying is we will approve the governor's spending plan and any changes 
moving forward will require a legislative approval. Back in March, the House of Representatives passed a bill that would have required legislative process to spend ARPA funds. That bill still sits in the Senate, and without that, no one in the legislature will be able to reallocate the ARPA funds. The way we appropriated and allocated general fund monies was based on what the governor had proposed for, that the agencies will be receiving under the ARPA allocation. And so any changes to the ARPA would, you know, in essence affect what um, the operations of the entity or the agencies because um, of the limited resources we have in the general fund. Other provisions added to the bill includes requiring the finance secretary to submit quarterly status reports, ordering departments to comply with federal and local regulations regarding overtime, extra pay, and premium pay. And there is just so much more. The budget bill now goes to the Senate. The legislature must pass a balanced budget before October 1 to avoid a government shutdown. A terrified ex-girlfriend calls the police on someone she never expected to see again. Sergio Rangamar is being charged with disturbing the peace to include domestic violence and stalking in the second degree. According to his ex-girlfriend, who is also the mother of his kids, Rangamar left to the mainland in 2012, which ended a seven-year relationship full of domestic violence. The victim says she suffers from paranoia, trauma, and stress. The victim also states that Rangamar was allegedly on ice before, and that was what caused him to beat her. The victim had no knowledge of him being back until he began contacting her. Rangamar would allegedly wait for her after her work shift, pass by her family's house, and even park around her comp apartment compound. The victim states that Rangamar has been gone for 10 years, and her and her children have been living in peace. But his reappearance took their peace away like it was nothing. The victim does not want to risk their lives again. Rangamar was arrested last night and appeared this morning in court for his bail hearing. Bail was set for $7,000, but Rangamar did not pay. Rangamar is currently being detained at the Department of Corrections. It's been one week since the death of a 20-year-old local girl who was found along the road up in Marpy. Police are still investigating the case. After following up on numerous leads and information, investigators from the CNMI Department of Public Safety were able to execute warrants that are critical to the death of Sophia Odon Damapon, who was only 20 years old. The latest update is that DPS has since taken possession of the vehicles that are believed to be involved in the incident. According to DPS spokesperson Adrian Pagalinen, investigators have also questioned persons of interest involved in the case. But this is still under investigation. Peglin and states more information and updates will be given at a later time to prevent any possibility of jeopardizing the case. On July 27th, police responded to an unresponsive woman who was lying on the road up in Marpy. First responders noticed that the woman had many lacerations and deformities. She was transported to the hospital and was pronounced dead at 1 a.m. The victim's family pleads that anyone who may know what happened that night to come forward, especially the people who were last seen with her. One lawmaker introduces legislation that may have the people elect the CNMI police chief. On Tuesday's House session, Representative Evan Probst introduced a House legislative initiative which may make the Department of Public Safety Commissioner an elected position. It gives um, the people of the Commonwealth uh, an opportunity to decide whether or not uh, they would like to elect the Department of Public Safety's commissioner. Probe says this has been done before. Back then, the Attorney General was by appointment from the governor, but with the same legislative process, it became the people's choice. Probe says after speaking with several constituents, this is a start to stop the alleged corruption. This has actually been brought up several times. Um, a lot of it came from um, discussions with many police officers that, that had met with me, many of them in confidence and their frustrations and the uh, political atmosphere uh, that, that is ongoing at the Department of Public Safety. And also basing it on history, we've seen where uh, a previous commissioner was uh, who was appointed um, actually was beholden to the governor and said he was just following orders 
And that's, that's part of the, the problem, is that when you have a uh, commissioner that is beholden to the governor instead of the people, then it creates a lot of problems. It in order for this legislative initiative to push through, it must pass the House and Senate by three-fourths of its members. Coming up, we pay our respects to Ivan Blanco with a short tribute. Stay tuned. My doctor gave me the pills, so they must be safe, right? If taken exactly as prescribed, short-term use can be safe, but painkillers have real risk. Misusing an opioid painkiller can cause serious harm, including addiction and death, and misuse can happen quite easily. Make sure you never mix them with alcohol, antidepressants, sedatives, or sleep aids. And if you are prescribed an opioid, you need to tell your doctor about any other drugs, including herbal supplements that you are taking. It only takes a little to lose a lot. $2,500. That's what's up for grabs when the road to 80 continues with this week's featured sponsor, POI Aviation. Watch the next drawing Thursday, August 5th on the road to 80 CNMI Facebook page. Register for your shot today at vaccinatecnmi.com or call 682-SHOT. The road to 80 is brought to you by the Office of the Governor, COVID-19 Task Force, Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation, Joe 10 Enterprises, Bridge Capital, Tan Holdings, and more. One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now, just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. websites like the CDC website, Mayo Clinic website, any established um, hospital system or healthcare system. I suspect that Kaiser has a lot of information out there. I would go um, to known websites, WebMD, Healthline, they all have a, a, a lot of information that is reliable and w well thought out. I would much less go to blogs and the individuals who are looking at it from their own perspective and not necessarily science. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Earlier this morning, the 22nd Legislature adopted a joint resolution to honor and commend the life and service of the late Ivan Blanco. It will be presented tomorrow, August 5th, at the State Funeral, which will be held at the Multipurpose Center in Susupi, starting at 9 a.m. The sudden passing of a beloved colleague still has the lawmakers in shock. Here is a short tribute to the late Ivan Blanco. He would burn the midnight candle. I mean, we, when I was appointed to be a comfrey for the conference committee for the 2021 budget, uh, I was privileged to be an alternate. And I would just remember this guy would just not rest until we had a, a product in place. And he would do whatever it took. You know, I, I had that privilege to learn from his tenacity. And he was just a statesman. He wanted to get stuff done and that was it. There was no questions to it. He was always looking at the, the positive side of uh, positive side 
of everything. He never looked at anything as a negative, whether it's a tough situation for the CNMI or for this body or anything else in the region. He always found a way try to, to try to make it a positive thing, a uh, learning experience, and to become better down the road. So, let's simply put, he just never made anything stressful in, that, in any situation. Not many of us possess his uh, demeanor, especially in our line of work. But through the years that uh, we, we work here in the, in the legislature, most recently during the uh, impasse of the budget last fiscal year, he was chairing the Waysen, I was chairing the fiscal. And all the time throughout, uh, leading up to the last hour, never changes his tone. He's always very assertive in terms of what he wants. And, and that's, you know, uh, gave more admiration to his, to his character. The only regrets is that he's not here long enough for us to, to work with him. He was a very uh, exceptional and rare leader. And when he became the minority leader, we don't address him as minority leader. He's just a leader because he's always been a leader. His heart has always been in the right place. He's irreplaceable. He's truly missed. And he's a friend to everybody. So everyone takes this. Um, very. It's been very difficult. Uh, he will be greatly missed, just like uh, our, you know, our house. Will, uh, he's very instrumental. He's very calm. Uh, you know, he knows how to um, be a statesman and he lead us. So we're gonna miss that. Uh, Blanco was just, uh, you know, an overall kind-hearted, humble, uh, and very professional in the sense that he, you know, he tried to pacify any situation and he, he always spoke with calmness and, and ease. And for him to, to step it up and, uh, you know, run for office to represent the people, not only of Precinct 3, but the CNMI in this house is uh, very honorable. And I think he's, his service to the people has been very exceptional. His family and um, his family, his children, and all of us are really proud for what we have, for what he has done and uh, we look forward to carrying on that legacy. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. All workers have the right to a safe workplace. Employers must provide a workplace that is free from recognized hazards and comply with applicable OSHA standards, including proper reporting of injuries. Training needs to be done in a language and vocabulary employees can understand. And an OSHA information poster must be displayed prominently in the workplace. 
workers, you have the right to raise a safety or health concern with your employer or OSHA without being retaliated against. And request an OSHA consultation of your workplace if you believe there are unsafe or unhealthy conditions. OSHA can help. Free assistance to identify and correct hazards is available to small and medium-sized employers without citation or penalty. So look out, speak up, and stay safe. Job safety and health, it's not only good practice, it's the law. Check out OSHA.gov or call 664-3154 or 3155. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports fans. Buenos sports fans, hope you're enjoying yourself. You're probably not enjoying yourself, though, as much as Robin Sapong is, the Oceania Athletics President and Northern Mariana Secretary General for Athletics, was at the marital ceremony for the women's 800 meters in Tokyo at the Olympics. There's Robin Sapong, originally from Chuuk. Sapong's been a mainstay for Northern Mariana's athletics for more than two decades, serving in all capacities, including currently Secretary General. Another person is making it to TV and Tokyo, Scott James Feedy. He was here and won the 100 meters on Saipan Micronesian Area Championships. That was 2018. He's representing the Federated States of Micronesia. We don't have any athletes representing us. Well, maybe one day. You know, for NAMIFA, they're giving new meaning to the term club. Nowadays, you tell a kid, hey, let's go to the club. That means like Pyre FC or Matanza. U15 boys soccer, Saturday morning on the Kville pitch. No video games needed for these student athletes. This is real. Jeremy Kim's on. He lost the shot. Easy save for Pyre FC. Soccer, of course, a lot of running as demonstrated here by Jack Paul Lazama. Who needs to pass anyway? Lorenzo rages. He doesn't know he stole the ball. Lazama goes down the goal line and he tries to stick it in the corner of the net, but the goalie wasn't buying. Yeah. 
when Pyrie gets careless in the box. Matanza exploits that. Cody Shimizu comes away with it. Spots Isaiah Jose and wide open in front of the goal. A goal? No, a heartbreak. Here's another room in Heartbreak Hotel on the opposite side of the hall. Call that a backbreaker, though, because that made the score. <clears throat> Pirey FC, to their credit, though, never quit hustling. You could see the age difference didn't matter. They were rumbling, stumbling, fumbling all over the field. Matanza, though, had more gunpowder, more bullets. Philip Magina, the cross. Another score for Isaiah, who had six goals. Philip also tallied six. Since a hat trick is three goals, six is a double hatter. And with Hossein and Magina both getting six, that's two double hatters. You ever see that before? No, only on KSPN2 Sports. In the other Saturday morning contest, Tan Holdings could not outkick Kanoa FC 2-1. to one. The final, Leila De Leon Guerrero scored the game winning in KFC's 2-1 to one nail biter. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! We're in a race whether we know it or not. And build our new normal. In a family, it's a deal. Let's make it a deal. Go karts, off roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Hours 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Golfers, come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. Drop into Shake Cafe at Gold's Gym for a quick and healthy meal. Fast food that's good for you. Our August Smoothie of the Month has oatmeal, peanut butter, raisins, and cinnamon. A healthy blend of 450 calories, perfect for a meal replacement or a supplement. Shake, shake, shake it up at Gold's Gym. Here's your weather report for today. The high was 89, the heat index 104. Yeah, very sticky. Below 78, humidity 75% tomorrow. The reappearance of Mr. Sun with pockets of showers. Winds, forget about it, not much. High 89, low 79, seas three to five feet. Sunrise six straight up. High tide at, well, no high tide until a low tide, 1149, sunset at 645. That is your new sports and abbreviated weather. See you back here on Friday. Good night.